no matter how you slice it, it is very clear what this document proves. Remember, I started talking about the Illuminati in 2009, and shortly after, around that time, the psychological warfare against me started. Then, I believe it was maybe 2014, something like that. I'll have to check it, I'll put it in the comments. I made the series, ISIS is more righteous than America. This document, which supposedly was originally written in the 80s, 1980, and then it was touched up by the author because it refers to things that happened in 2003. And, and so it, it, it must be at least from 2003. For example, this phrase, it, uh, this, this part, it was with some fascination that I saw specific of its prescriptions applied during the first Gulf War and recently even more obvious during the 2003 invasion of Iraq. In both instances, extreme PSYOP was directed both against the object of the attack and upon U.S. domestic public perception and opinion. In 2003, to the extent of embedding journalists with military units to inevitably channel their perspectives and perceptions. Embedding is in quotations, and I'll put this you know, on this, the pictures on the screen. This document proves beyond any doubt that well after MKUltra ended, psych op was being applied before i even was using this before i even found this document i was talking about how there was an evolution of you know mk ultra okay and mk ultra was a psyop and the title of this document is from psyop to mind war and supposedly part of it is about the ethics of psychological operations ethics written by a satanist and any person who's a high level satanist for example knows very well that Satanists are tricksters. So there was something more devious, more sinister, you know, being um, relayed here, being communicated here by Satanists to each other. You know, and if you read carefully, you think about the deeper implications. It is saying using Satanic philosophy and trickery is more ethical than murder. It's really discussing the most practical way to bring in a satanic agenda. So as I was targeting, talking about the things that make up American society, you know, secret societies pretty much founded this nation. They have been involved in this nation on every level since its beginning. And the ideologies of Satanists are part of Western philosophy. And I've been trying to explain this many, many times. You know, Western philosophy is derived from Satanic philosophy and Luciferian doctrine. Just look at the letters from Pike to Mazzini. It makes it clear that what they've been doing is trying to incrementally bring in the Luciferian doctrine. And because most people would not be okay with that at this point, it becomes a matter of national security. Therefore, psychological warfare may be applied to anybody who is interfering in this agenda. And since it might cause civil war and unrest, they must be silenced before they can relay this information to the masses in a cogent and um, consumable manner. So it goes on, you know, this document has the details. Um, so the reason why I'm calling this series Psychological Warfare, you know, is this. Psychological warfare is the coordination and use of all means, including moral and physical, by which the end is attained. Other than those of recognized military operations, but including the psychological exploitation of the result of those recognized military actions, 
which tend to destroy the will of the enemy to achieve victory and to damage his political or economic capacity to do so, which tend to deprive the enemy of the support, assistance, or sympathy of his allies or associates or of neutrals, or to prevent his acquisition of such support, assistance, or sympathy, or which tend to create, maintain, or increase the will to victory of our own people and allies, and to acquire, maintain, or to increase the support, assistance, and sympathy of neutrals. So everything that they're doing isn't just satanic and evil. It is doing exactly what is described here. By having homosexuals, you know, drug me and sexually assault me and violate me, and to take, record it allows them to debunk me. We all know that it is not cool to be played out, you know, to be made to seem to be homosexual, especially if you're speaking out against it. Then you don't have any allies. You, you alienate all the people who see it the same way as you about homosexuals. And you alienate yourself from homosexuals themselves because you've been speaking bad about them. So you have nowhere to turn. Therefore, you've been deprived the support, assistance, or sympathy of allies, associates, and neutrals. And you've been prevented from you know, acquiring this support. Just like it says here. And part of the military actions they've done in the past is MK Ultra. You know, those are some of the recognized military actions which tend to destroy the will of the enemy to exploit these. They're exploiting what they learned in MK Ultra, and they're exploiting the fact that other people are going to be afraid to be targeted by this program as well. This I cannot urge you enough. You know, I've made I've I've pointed out many, many times that even back in 2012, I talk about how they are, you know, teaming up against me. They're running a psychological operation is how I put it before I started using the term gang stalking. And when I used the term gang stalking, because so many people were talking about gang stalking, I thought perhaps it was the smart way to do it, put it, but it wasn't. It isn't. Because it, it kind of puts this conspiratorial term, you know, uh, in, 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 it replaces a logical term the euphemism psychological operations with a conspiratorial kind of conspiracy related and, and associated people associate that phrase with conspiracy gang stalking you know i try to use government harassment but psychological warfare gets to the meat of it and it thoroughly describes who is doing it and who is supporting them of course universities and educations just like with mk ultra support psychological warfare being done by the military. That's why University of Phoenix, the university I attended, gives a discount to the military. Of course, local law enforcement and intelligence agents and gang members who, some of them, are in the military or were in the military and have family members in the military, of course they're utilized. This is psychological warfare. And what is so interesting is that this is a recognized military operation. And that is in the document. They say that is part of what they're going to exploit or what they're going to utilize against people for its efficacy. Mind war is the deliberate, aggressive convincing of all participants in a war that we will win the war. And how do they do that? By saying things to me, you know, like, you're not really the top martial artist, even though they don't accept my challenge. They know that I am the top martial artist. But part of what they're doing is trying to convince me that I'm not as smart or talented as I claim to be, or that as I quote unquote think I am, so that I don't think I can win. And so that people around me who might join my cause don't think that they can win either. On the other hand, it does not seem to have reassured the sensibilities of the Soviets, who in 1980 described the U.S. Army PSYOP as including unpardonable methods of ideological sabotage, including not just blackmail, provocation, and terror. So the Soviets described these, this PSYOP as terrorism, for all intents and purposes. This is in 1980. 21 years before 9-11. They said America is terrorizing its political opposition, its political dissidents, 
foreign and domestic. Anyone who gets in their way. And remember, this document is is from 1980, and it's it's done again in 19 uh, excuse me in 2003 at least. And ironically, it's also important to note that I was sympathetic to communist ideas. I wasn't completely a communist. You might say I was a pinko commie. <laughs> but I talk about redistributing the wealth and the exploitation of the labor force. I use the word communism many times. I even had to describe myself as a communist many times. And another thing in quotations here, I don't know if I'm going to take pictures for all this, but you can look up the document. From Psyop to from Psyop to Mind War: The Psychology of Victory by Colonel Paul E. Valley, Commander, with Major Michael A. Aquino, Psyop Research and Analyst, Teamlin, uh, Teamlin, Analysis Teamlin. It talks about a great need for a synonym which would be used in peacetime that would not shock the sensibilities of a citizen of democracy. So, Western demonocracy or democracy. Because there's a difference, a true democracy, perhaps, you know, which probably never plays out that way, you know, has ideas that are pretty respectable. But how it plays out in a secret society run world, you know, in a world with crony capitalism and so on, is that the people truly don't have a say. There's a massive psych op being run on us all. And that's what's referred to in this as well. How. The, uh, the military embedded its units with journalists who would then portray a favorable message. And I'm sure some of you are familiar that Bush spent over a billion dollars on quote-unquote media spin. So, of course, on record, the media is controlled, the controlled media. And, of course, it's for psychological purposes. You know, and a lot of you don't understand why. I'm not just harsh on psychiatrists, but psychologists and all of mental health as well. It's because, you know, when you when, when some psychologists speak out against psychiatry, it's because that arguably psychologists are worse for society than psychiatrists because these are psychological operations and they don't always include drugs, you know? And that's another way they sought to keep me from getting sympathy by playing me out as crazy. Absolutely, and absolutely the CIA is involved. You know, they're concerned with these things. The CIA might be the most concerned group or entity in America when it comes to politics. I mean, these people assassinate people in foreign countries and prop up other people and they take, they go to great lengths and they fight dirty. You know, for that reason, they may be the most concerned with politics, you know, and the military is just part of it is, you know, they're, they're, they're military intelligence, the military is part of it, the Marines, the Air Force, the Navy, the Army, what have you. And of course, the National Guard is a, is a part of the Army, the well, part of the Armed Forces as well. And what do they do? They quell uh, uprisings, you know. And they and they do in a very harsh manner. For those of you who remember, you know, who were alive during the riots, I'm sure you remember the National Guard was very violent and very ruthless with when it came to stifling dissent and putting down revolt. So yes, this is from the psychological warfare playlist, and I hesitated to make another playlist. I wanted to end it, but and and that's interesting too. How I wanted to end it when they managed to covertly drug me. But when they didn't manage to drug me, not only does the martial arts and the white key come out better, but I no longer want to end it. I wish to keep going. And I'll end this by saying this. Does that not fall exactly in line with mind uh, wars, the deliberate, aggressive convincing of all participants in a war that we will end the, that war, that we, that we will win that war, which, you know, is about convincing you not to continue to fight. Thank you.